Okay. All right. So uh, welcome to my webinar today. Um, and this is uh, going to be on optimizing air cooling in electronic enclosures. Um, well, this is not specifically um, for the exam for this webinar. I'm going to use an example of an electronic enclosure. But there's a lot of uh, features and tools that you will see here today in full simulation that uses uh, that can be used in other applications outside of ice um, outside of um, electronic enclosures um, and uh, in areas where air cooling can be used so um, for example perforated plates or uh, using fans and some form of uh, heat dissipation involved um, all this can be uh, applied to many different applications as, as you will, um, as you can see as you will be able to see today all right so um, when it comes to designing um, electronic enclosures or for that matter even a, a, an air cooling system um, a lot of times um, you will be uh, thinking about a few aspects as you're as you're putting this assembly together um, and um, as you are designing as, as most um, designers who also these days run an analysis they always think ahead as they're designing how do I make this part uh, designed well so I can run my simulation and get proper results um, so a few things that you might think about is the heat sink right so early on in the process you want to start to identify um, what is the right heat sink to use in my air, uh, air cooling uh, system um, there's many 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 different types of heat sinks many different sizes um, you can't go out and buy them all and test them so running a simulation analysis will allow you to at least uh, predict what, how that heat sink is going to perform. Um, uh, another aspect is air convection, right? So there's going to be all these different components that are dissipating heat uh, in your in your system, um, and you need to be able to see how that uh, heat is affecting the ambient temperature, which can cause uh, your entire system temperature to go up. Now, a lot of times, especially in in components like a compact electronic enclosures they have a very limited operating uh, uh, temperature uh, range so for example if you're using small fans uh, you know the the um, axial fans that you can find in in uh, desktop computers those can those probably range from room temperature to uh, plus uh, plus 40 degrees so uh, you know about maybe uh, maybe about 45 to uh, 50 Celsius um, and uh, the equivalent for for the Fahrenheit so you want to be within uh, an acceptable uh, temperature range uh, for your system then obviously you have conduction right so that's where uh, your heat sink comes into play because the heat sink is uh, uh, pulling the uh, uh, heat out of the chip that it's sitting on um, and in addition to that, you might have all these different components in your in your system that is touching. Uh, so solid components that are touching each other that could be conducting uh, heat. Uh, so we need to ensure that we're not transferring too much heat to areas that that we want to avoid high high temperature. Um, and last but not least, when we pull all this together, we want to make sure that we have the proper airflow, right? So a lot of times it might be easy uh, to place a, a, a transformer or a capacitor in a certain uh, in a certain uh, location on your PCB board, uh, but it might constrict your airflow. So again, you might not be you might not have the access to try many different uh, configurations because a lot of times you need to solder these parts in and you can't keep changing the location running it in flow simulation uh, allows you to test different locations for your capacitors and um, you know uh, transformers uh, even your fan location all can be moved 
and see how the how the air is flowing to ensure that we are having maximum airflow through your heat sinks, which is typically going to be the higher higher temperature area in your in your system. All right. So uh, for today's example, uh, we are going to look at an, an electronic enclosure, um, and the analysis parameters are as follows. Uh, for this system, there is uh, heat being dissipated from uh, our capacitors, our transformers, and the chips underneath uh, the heat sinks here. Um, it has to be air cooled, so a lot of times systems like this we can't use water cooling just because if there's a leak it will cause a, a lot of issues, right? I mean it will probably burn, burn the, the chip. Um, we know that this is going to be in room temperature. Sometimes you might be in an environment where the temperature might be higher or lower. Uh, if it's lower, it's, it's to your advantage because it helps with the cooling. If it's higher, then you need to uh, ensure that uh, the direction that the air is flowing uh, is, is the right direction. Sometimes, um, uh, for, well, for in this example, our fan is pulling the air in. There's going to be instances where you need your air, your fan to be blowing air out. So again, these are the types of things that you can run in flow simulation. So you can even change the fan direction. Um, and the third uh, parameter that we know uh, in this analysis is the heat sources. And that's based on efficiency. So a lot of times um, you might get a chip um, and it says it's uh, running at 100 and it's, it's 120 watt chip. Um, and it has 80% efficiency, or just to keep it simple, um, it's a 100 watt chip at 80% um, efficiency. That would mean that it's dissipating 20 watts of heat. Um, so that's that's really how we how we are how we are applying it in flow simulation. Uh, in our example here, um, we are going to assume that it is at 90% efficiency. So we are dissipating about 10 watts each uh, from the chip. Um, and what we need to find from this analysis, we need to uh, find the best airflow, um, so depending on location uh, of your fan. Uh, sometimes, you know, it might, it might be easy to say, well, you know, if I don't have a good flow, I'm just going to keep adding fans to my system. Well. Uh, there's going to be instances where you have noise uh, criteria, where you know you you can't be above a certain amount of decibel. In cases like that, uh, you can't simply just add uh, x number of fans. You need to minimize the number of fans. Maybe you can only use one or two at the maximum to keep the sound low enough. Um, and depending on how you place the fan you can get the best airflow over your heat sink. Um, you can also test different heat sinks. Uh, so there's many different types of heat sinks. So this has, uh, oops. So these has a configuration of the fins are going um, um, in uh, this kind of horizontal direction. Um, you can have the fins going in the opposite direction. Um, you can have, uh, heat sinks which, uh, which are not even using fins like this. They are more like uh, pins, uh, so, uh, which we'll, we will look at in, in this example today. And last but not least, uh, we, want also to, we want to be also be able to test multi-unit heat dissipation. So um, a lot of times, uh, you know, running the analysis for one unit gives you uh, the insight to that single unit. While you can say, well, you know, I have very good uh, cooling in this system, uh, but maybe I'm right around that, that maximum number, uh, and now you're causing some convection between two units. So you're stacking two of these units, uh, one over the other, and maybe you have just a slight gap between those. Uh, maybe there's just a, some rubber padding uh, uh, or rubber stand. And now you're building the heat up because heat travels up, gravity, and, uh, uh, sorry, against gravity. So heat travels up and it's causing, so if you're stacking two or three of these, uh, maybe the bottom one is, is cooled, but the second and third unit is, is heating up 
based on uh, the heat moving up. So we're going to look at how we can also analyze, t basically take the results from this single unit and then multiply it by multiple units. All right, so uh, with that said, let's jump into SolidWorks. Um, so here I have the uh, electronic enclosure um, with, with the top and bottom casing closed on it. Now this is, uh, for, for this example, for the internal unit itself, it's not so important uh, that we have, uh, well, you, you have to have the, the casing because a flow simulation analysis has to be a closed unit, it has to be an airtight unit. Um, however, it's not so important uh, for us to define uh, any material for the top unit here because we simply want to see how the airflow is moving inside the system. Now when we're starting to stack that um, system two or three units, then it starts to become important because um, there is uh, some conduction and convection going on there, right? So we will look at that in the second part of this uh, example. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just right click this and uh, you can either make it transparent. A lot of times I, I like to work in, in transparent. Uh, uh, transparency you can kind of see it and at the same time you see everything that's going on inside for this example what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely hide it just so that you can see it clearly in the uh, webinar all right so what we're going to do first is we're going to just go over briefly how we are setting up the system following the airflow so we're going to start from here as the air comes in and as the air goes out, right? So how do we set this system up? Um, so flow simulation, um, it is an add-on into SOLIDWORKS. Uh, brings up a tab, flow simulation right here. I'm going to start a new analysis. I'm going to say wizard. I'm going to say next. This will allow me to set up my units. So a lot of times you're mix and matching units. So you're not just following a one prescribed unit type. Uh, so although I might say IPS, which is what most of us use uh, for my temperature, maybe I want to work in, in Celsius as opposed to Fahrenheit. So I can change just that in this, uh, in this box right here. I'll say next. Uh, for this, I definitely want to select heat conduction in solids. Um, and uh, in, in this specific example itself, gravity is not too important because um, the system is, is fairly uh, uh, com com compact, so we don't really need to specify gravity. Uh, it wouldn't hurt if you do specify it. So I'll, I'll leave it out um, this time around. I'll hit next year. So the type of gas that I'm using in my system, it's simply uh, an air system. And I'll say next. Oops, need to uh, just double click that. Say next. And because I did specify heat conduction in solids, uh, I do need to specify a, um, a default material. So I'm just going to say um, aluminum uh, for this case, just a general aluminum, because in, in my example, yeah, I'm actually going to specify material for all my components. So I can, I can just go into metals and I can say aluminum. Say next. Um, no real conditions for my wall, hit next. And these are my um, starting uh, default uh, parameters, uh, where it's starting. So I, I did mention just now it's at uh, 70 um, um, Fahrenheit. So I could uh, simply just type in 70F and actually that translates over to Celsius for me. Uh, so it's about, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to round it up to 21. All right, so that is uh, the air pressure. It's just uh, uh, ambient um, atmospheric pressure. And I'm going to say um, finish. So this now creates the study for me. Um, and the next item uh, that we need to specify in this system is uh, our uh, material for the solid materials. So 
one thing that's very nice about flow simulation is that it's tied into SOLIDWORKS, right? So a lot of times as you're designing your parts, you are applying some material to it, right? So you can, uh, so for example, if I, let, if I open up one of these materials, so the heat sink, um, sorry, open up one of these parts, you can see that you probably are putting in some material here, right? It's just good bookkeeping as you are, as you're designing your part. Now, what this allows you to do, though, is in your flow simulation, you can actually bring that material property back into flow simulation. So if you right-click this, you can actually say import data from model. So as long as you've applied a material to most of your parts, so you can see I have um, ABS set for a lot of this, which I don't really want. I don't really need that ABS material, so I'm just going to check this and then I'm going to specify the 6063 for the heat, heat sinks and then for my back plate and my front plate here is the 6061 alloy and um, that's it so that's the materials that I'm going to bring over from SOLIDWORKS I'm going to hit import and you can see it just creates it right here for me alright so this at this point I can exit this now, there are other components here that needs material specified. So, within flow simulation, there's also material properties that you can uh, select. So, I can say insert solid material. You can see that I have a predefined uh, material and there's also user defined where you can go in and create custom materials. Um, so, in this case, I'll just do one or two. So, I'll just do the... Uh, um, the bottom casing is a, is a plastic, so I'll do that. I'll do a polymer and select that bottom casing. And then maybe I'll do the PCB board as well. So I'll right click that, uh, import, uh, no, select solid material. I'll do semiconductor. Oh, uh, Let's see where it is. There it is. Uh, Non-isotropic PCB four layers, and select like that. Let's say okay. So you can see as I'm uh, uh, creating my analysis here, I can just simply put in all that uh, solid material. So uh, so I'm gonna uh, continue on for now, and then you can kind of see my completed model in in a second here. So the next thing we need to uh, create uh, in this flow simulation analysis is our boundary conditions, right? So inlet and outlet, that's the basic idea here. Um, so for our inlet, uh, the air is being sucked in by the fan. So it's coming in from this uh, cutout holes right here. Now, we can actually keep, keep these holes as is. Um, and then just apply a boundary condition to those holes. But let's say if you are testing out or you would like to test out a different design. In this case, let's say I want to test out a perforated um, uh, plate. So a plate with small holes as opposed to slots, right? So what I could do here, uh, and this is a very cool functionality in flow simulation, is I can actually select this model right here. And I'm going to just switch a configuration to uh, perforated plate. Say OK. Now you don't really see uh, any holes here. Well, you don't actually need to model those holes. Flow simulation actually allows you to insert a condition called perforated plates. So when you select that, you just need to select the faces um, well, I need to actually set it as a um, environment pressure first, just so that it knows that it's uh, environment pressure, and that's where the inlet and the air is coming in from there. So I'm just going to select those two faces, say OK, and now I'll be able to apply that uh, perforated plate. So I'll say insert, perforated plate, select those two faces. And um, in this case, you can do a hexagon holes, rectangular holes, uh, or round holes. 
and you can even specify the size of the hole um, so if we come in here you can look within our database um, you can specify the diameter of the hole um, the and the uh, distance between the holes to, to each other so in this case what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the predefined ones I want to say round holes and I'm going to say OK. So now those two plates are uh, plates with small holes in them, which I did not have to waste time and model in SOLIDWORKS. Um, OK, so uh, moving along here, now the air is flowing through here. We've taken care of that. We have our materials. Um, the next thing we need here is how the air is going to move to the fan. So we need to actually define this uh, component right here as a fan. So if we uh, open up this, this uh, or select on this fan model here for a second. Again, just because everything is tied in to SOLIDWORKS, we always have access to the geometry. Um, I'm just going to show this face right here okay so I can uh, create um, my fan condition it's actually a lid so this is the condition right here I'll show that component so you can see that it's just a, a, a component that sits there uh, like a round plate that basically turns the com the system into an airtight system. So um, I'll say insert, uh, sorry, tools, flow simulation, insert right here, and I have my fan uh, tool. So I select my fan, and we have three different types of fan that you can apply. So any any type of fan that you can think of in your system, we can create in this flow simulation. So uh, the three types of fan is fan number one is it's pulling the air into the fan. Um, that is called external outlet fan. The second uh, condition we have is the fan is blowing uh, the air. So it's sucking the air from outside and blowing it into your system. That's called external inlet fan. And last but not least we have an internal fan. So let's say for example, we have a fan that sits right in the middle of this of this flow simulation. In that case, you can actually apply internal fan, and not only you would specify where the fan, uh, where the air leaves the fan, it will also uh, can you can also create a condition where the fan where the air uh, comes into the fan. So a lot of times, a fan design will have some some cutout shapes in the back. So it, it will actually take into account all that geometry to show you how the air is being restricted into that fan as it comes out. Quite a bit that you can do here. So in this case, external outlet fan, I'm selecting that, uh, that disk. So that's the area where the air is flowing through the fan. And then you can specify your fan. So um, just like everything else in flow simulation, you can either do a predefined. So we have quite a bit of fans already in the system. Uh, I know Delta uh, is a very popular uh, fan type that uh, that's being used in the industry. Um, uh, Com Air uh, as well. So quite a bit right here. Uh, if you can fan, if you can find the fan type, great. If not, you can always create your own as well. Um, all you need is the fan curve the, with the CFM values uh, versus the air pressure, which most of these companies have ready for you. Um, I, I uh, build uh, user-defined fans quite a bit, so it's, it's very, it's fairly easy to get that information. So in this case, I'm going to actually use a, a fan curve. Uh, DC axial fan 450 and I'll say okay all right so this is basically uh, has uh, is the basic setup to be able to run my flow simulation analysis so kind of let's kind of take a look at a more completed analysis 
and look at results and how we can populate those results uh, to our advantage. So let's take a look at uh, this configuration I have here. And you can see that in this example, I actually have uh, more materials are defined. So I have a copper for my transformers, uh, some insulator geometry for my plug right here for the fan. Um, I have some silicon so, uh, solid material for these small chips right here. Um, <clears throat> and uh, of course, the, the heat source as well. So that's uh, something that I missed in, in previously. So for a heat source, um, also within the tools flow simulation insert, you can add a heat source that comes, that dissipates from the surface of your components or from the entire component itself. Um, so in this example, uh, if you can see here, what I've done is I've selected those two uh, chips underneath the heat sink and I've select and I've uh, applied 10 watts of heat being dissipated from those uh, components. Okay, and the same was done for um, the capacitor. This large capacitor right here is 10 watts, 5 watts each for the small capacitors, and 4 watts each for the uh, for the transformers right here. Okay, so that's where all the heat is being generated from. Okay, so this is one that I've already completed from before, so I can actually just load the results. We'll take a look at how the uh, how the flow looks at, looks like. Um, I always like to start my um, once I've once I've run my analysis, I like to view my results uh, by uh, starting with the flow trajectory because that really shows you how the air is flowing through and and whether you're getting good coverage. So. For this, I will select the uh, where the air comes in, spheres, say OK. This shows me a preview of how that air is going to look, uh, but nothing like uh, animation. So I hope this translates well onto your end. I will zoom in so you should be able to see this clearly. All right, I'm going to give it a few seconds here because I know there is a, a buffer of a few seconds over your end. Uh, on my end, this is flowing in real time. You can actually see the air is flowing through the uh, inlet and right through the uh, right out the fan. So it might be buffering or slow on your end through the webinar. Uh, but if you view this uh, in our in our recorded video after this, you should be able to see that uh, that flow very nice and clean. All right, so I'm going to stop this right here. So this brings us to the second part of this uh, um, this presentation, where we say, okay, um, this is good. Um, perhaps uh, the temperature might be a little high. Um, well, I want to test a different heat sink. Um, well, so you can easily do that uh, using configurations in SolidWorks. So Again, because the flow simulation, the CFD software is tied in with the geometry, you can uh, interactively change the geometry and use the tools within the CAD geometry tool within SOLIDWORKS uh, to navigate between your different analysis, right? So in this example right here, you can see that I have multiple different configurations. So if I go from my top um, I have uh, one with the uh, same fan configuration, but you can see that I have a different heat sink. Give it a few seconds here. All right, uh, and then uh, Let's load this up. And let's look, view the uh, 
flow trajectory through this. And you can view um, if there's any change in the temperature. So a good way to, to view the temperature uh, change when you say a changing a component is using uh, cut plots. So what we will do here, I'll hide this and we will create a um, cut plot right here and we can actually drag this cut plot right in the middle of the heat sink say temperature, say OK. And now you can actually see the heat um, or the change in, in temperature on that heat sink right there. So to view this e uh, clearly, you can even use your section view. And uh, there you go. Very nice and clean. All right. So, um, just for, just for example purposes, I can show you one more where we did uh, two fans. So now I'll say show configuration with, uh, instead of using one fan, um, I want to add a second fan because I wasn't getting enough cooling in my first, uh, first setup. So I did one fan and I tried two different types of heat sinks. Didn't really pan out well, so I did uh, a few other configurations with uh, two fans and there are going to be instances again going back to uh, earlier of my presentation where I said you might have a, a sound uh, requirement where two fans might be too loud well in a lot of uh, um, enclosures like this you can have one fan running at full speed and a second fan running at half speed that's another aspect that you can test in flow simulation before actually building the uh, the system, uh, physically building the system, right? So you can test different speeds that your fan has to be at, uh, where you're at a good sound level, and you're also getting the the right cooling, um, or you're within the right uh, uh, operational uh, temperature. Okay. So you can see here how I have switched over to a different configuration and we can still see um, how the air flows, no problem. All right, so uh, I do want to uh, wrap this analysis, uh, wrap this presentation up uh, in about a couple minutes. So I will go to the last part of this where we are finally happy with our internal system. We are saying, all right, well, you know, I'm going to go with the one fan with, with uh, heat sink one and um, now I want to stack these up and I want to see what type of conve uh, convection I'm getting between the units because uh, I do have a plastic casing which can um, uh, capture heat, right? So it's not completely insulated. Uh, so for that, I'm going to jump to another assembly that I have here. Called stack. And you can see what I've done here is I've actually built a, kind of a, 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 an artificial uh, space or room and I've stacked up two systems. And essentially it's the exact same analysis, uh, however just using two systems and um, adding a box and this is a kind of a hollow box. And I've created an environment condition on this hollow box. You can actually view it. So it looks like that where it is at uh, room, uh, uh, well, maybe the temperature is a little bit higher in this case. So in this example, I did set it to 75 Fahrenheit. Uh, but the uh, uh, pressure is environment pressure. So basically, it's just sitting in, in, a, in a room that has a higher temperature. <clears throat> I have uh, my heat generation as before and now I've actually added um, 
plastic material to the top and bottom casing. So also have pre-ran this analysis and let's actually take a look at the results. And the best way to view this is using our cut plots. Say OK. And you can see right away that there is some heat growing or uh, some added heat between the spaces uh, the space between the two units, right? So this right here is just air, but the air in between the two units is going up. So just imagine if you're stacking maybe five or six of these units, that temperature between the system can start to raise. And you can actually see that the uh, temperature here and here is a little bit different. Right, so the temperature is a little bit higher now because the heat is, is moving up. Uh, you can see in this analysis right here, I did have gravity checked. So the temperature is moving up and um, now let's say if I have five of this stacked, your unit one and unit two might be okay within, uh, within the acceptable temperature range, but unit number five and six might not be so uh, uh, might not be in in, in a proper uh, temperature um, operational range. So again, this is a really good way to test the final uh, area where that uh, that unit might end up. Right. So again, in this in this example right here, um, in the previous example, I set it to seventy uh, Fahrenheit or twenty one Celsius to begin with. But in this uh, ex uh, analysis, I did 75 because I might say, well, you know, there might be heat that is accumulating from other equipment close by to this, which is generating uh, some, some outside um, heat as well, dissipating some outside heat, which is being pulled in by that fan. All right, so um, one last thing that I wanted to uh, share with you. One thing that's uh, very nice with uh, flow simulation is that um, this probably looks very familiar to you. This is the cross section of the single unit. You can actually preview this while you're solving the analysis. So what a lot, a lot of people might not know is that, uh, yeah, flow simulation can take a, a few minutes, uh, half an hour, uh, 20 minutes to solve. But within the first few minutes, you'll be able to see a preview like this a lot of times you can tell whether you're getting or you have set up the analysis correctly. So I just wanted to kind of throw this in there so you can see um, how the preview looks, preview looks like. So in this case, it looks very realistic, right? Heat uh, being generated by those components. And that's my heat sink cross section right there. And this is the air, uh, the air temperature. All right. So everything that you've seen here today is... Uh, within the flow simulation package of uh, SOLIDWORKS uh, flow simulation. Um, there is an addition, uh, additional package uh, for electronic cooling, which allows you to kind of take this uh, a step further with your, with your electronic cooling, where you can do Joule heating, heating your pipes, even a PCB generator, um, and an extended database for your uh, fans and heat sinks, even for your material and, and printed circuit boards. All right, so that brings us to the end of uh, this webinar today. Uh, please feel free to uh, uh, email me, call, uh, and visit our website, of course. I'm just going to open up the floor to any questions. Um, let's see. Uh, so... Okay, that's one question about the uh, about the video. Yes, so every webinar that we do, uh, we typically record. So this webinar is being recorded right now, and uh, it will be posted on our Cat Dimensions YouTube website, uh, typically within a day or, or two days. So I would say within the end of this week, 
you should have the the video this video up on our YouTube website that you can find through our website at www.catdimensions.com uh, it's on the top right corner it's a small YouTube icon you click on that brings you to our YouTube page uh, where, where you can view this and many other webinars that we have recorded in the past all right any other questions at this point okay another question this, uh... with the stacked example was the entire model reanalyzed uh, from the single model so uh, great question uh, it can be done both ways so SOLIDWORKS flow simulation does have a, uh, a, a tool called EFT zooming where basically what it does is it takes your entire system the results that you've gotten from your from your entire system and you can zoom in on a certain area and rerun your analysis so you can probably backtrack so you can run a two or three stack analysis and then zoom in on a single on a single unit um, on the other way around what I've actually done in this analysis is when I stacked two units I actually reran the entire analysis because um, when you ran a single unit, the air outside of the unit was not considered, right? It was an internal unit. So only the air within the unit, the computational domain within the unit was considered. Now, I wanted to see the air buildup between unit 1 and unit 2. For that, I needed convection, air convection for the, uh, for the entire system. So I do, do need to rerun that an entire analysis. One thing that I do want to bring up is that that second analysis where the unit, two units was stacked, it was still an inter internal unit. It wasn't an external unit, uh, external uh, analysis, I mean. So uh, a lot of times you might think, well, you know, if, if I'm, if I'm going to consider the air around my system, I'm doing an external unit. Not necessarily. You can just build an artificial room like what I did select all the faces and say that it's all environment uh, or, or environment pressure and run the analysis. It's a lot faster and uh, you get uh, the pretty good results. Okay, uh, any other questions? Uh, all right, so that was it. No more questions for now. Um, again, if you do think of a question after this webinar, feel free to email me, sashi at catdimensions.com. Um, we will, uh, I will be more than happy to answer those questions. All right, thank you all uh, again for joining me this afternoon. Have a great day and I will see you in, on my next webinar. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.